traditional procurement route, what I want you to, to know about the relationships. So the client has a relationship with the main contractor. It is, this is the contractual relationship. And then he has a contractual relationship with whom? The consultant. What is the relationship between the consultant and the architect? The architect is going to be the one who administering the contract, like supervision. He's going to do the supervision. This consultant could be cost consultant, could be anything. But the, the client could have this guy, the architect, doing everything. Could be one consultant doing design, doing supervision, doing everything for the, for the employer. Okay, but this is a bit more detailed. So here, look at the architect and the main contractor. This is the problematic area that everyone is concerned about. This is the direction line, where if you want to give an instruction to the contractor under any traditional procurement route, who is going to issue the instruction? After, after the sign of the contract and the kick-off kick meeting, you, you already introduce everyone, and now you want to start. You want to send instruction number one, changes. Who's going to send that instruction to the contractor? Who? Come on. Yeah? Client? No. It should be the architect. Because the architect is the, is the party responsible of issuing instructions. Why is not the client? Because the client could not be you know, knowledgeable enough to issue proper instructions. All instructions should go through a filter. So the instruction starts by the client, but will go to the architect. The architect will look at that instruction, if it is really viable, if it is technically possible, and then he will issue an instruction to the contractor if he's happy with it. But he has to advise the client of the consequences. Client is ignorant, he doesn't know. That's why we, we, have, a, we have a safety net through the creation of architects. So we call the architect here, what? Superintendent. In most of the projects, we call him superintendent. Okay, so you need to know about these basics. Another issue that you need to know about, under the main contractor, we have three types of subcontractors. We have domestic subcontractors, any subcontractor who's going to be appointed by the contractor from his choice. He can choose anyone. We call them domestic subcontractors. And there is someone also called named subcontractor, and that named subcontractor is anyone who is named in the contract. Like the client will say, look, if you want to select cladding subcontractors, these are the names of the people that I would like them to get involved in, or equivalent. You name A, B, and C. These are named in the contract. Usually you cannot go beyond these names. So unless you have a major case that they don't want to tender for the project, they are busy, you, are, you have history with them, so it depends. We have another one, which is not here, called nominated subcontractors. You remember the Mac Heights, where I tried to engage subcontractors under the, con the main contractor? I nominate people under the, under the main contract. So this is called nominated subcontractors. Under the Australian standard 2124, you can nominate. Under the Australian standard 4000, you cannot nominate unless you do innovation. Okay, but just understand the relationships. These are the major relationships.